Hello, this is Brad from Survival Comps, and today we're going to make a ground plane kit for the Abri 42 and a half inch antenna. This antenna has almost a cult type following, and I've done a review on it, and there's been a lot of other channels that have done reviews on it too. And it is a good performer. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, it appears to me to be a 5 8 wave at VHF antenna. So it's going to provide 3 dBD of gain, which is 3 decibels over a dipole, which is nothing to sneeze at. The only problem is, is it's an extremely impractical antenna. I mean, you're not going to run around with this thing attached to your portable radio in the woods. And I've had people comment on my channel, on uh, my video, and they talked about how they've incorporated it into pack frames and other stuff like that, which is, you know, hey, cool, if it works for you. Uh, my personal feelings are that you should have a flexible portable radio antenna mounted on your portable radio when you're walking around with it. That's the utility of having a portable radio. And having something that's slaved to a pack or something like that isn't necessarily practical because it kind of doesn't make it into a portable radio, it makes it into a man pack radio. So, however, when you're at a camp or a fixed location and you want to extend the range of your radio, this would be a good option for that considering that it is a 5 8 wave antenna. And we can look at the size of it here. Fold it up like this in my testing, it does not work very well whatsoever. But when you do extend it to its full 42 and a half inches of length, it does perform respectably. Now this antenna is using an SMA female connector. So therefore it has a shank on it. Now my other ground plane kit that I've done a video on before utilizes a, as a uh, SMA male connector on it. So it's a little bit different. So I've come up with a very simple ground plane kit that you can utilize for an antenna that uses the same attachment method to utilize the antenna over its own independent ground plane with a section of feed line to use at a camp and to take advantage of the elevation. Let's start our project here. We're going to make a ground plane kit for an SMA female antenna. We're going to need some radials and we're going to make those out of a stainless steel bicycle cable. You can use shift cable, you can use brake cable. Uh, whatever is least expensive is fine. It'd be advised when you go to your local bike shop, if you get the higher end cables, those are very difficult to solder to. So the cheaper cables that are available on Amazon work just fine for this purpose. You'll need one RF adapter. The RF adapter that I used is available on Amazon and it is misspelled, but that's the name of the company. And the part number is Tango Whiskey dash Bravo November Charlie Juliet dash Sierra Mike Alpha Papa and what you'll do is, is just enter that into your box and you'll see them pop up. There are three for $12.99 and they're actually in black now instead of being like nickel plated. You'll need a one by one square of 20 hundredths thick brass shim stock. You know metric equivalent is just fine. It doesn't necessarily have to be but you want it to be thin. You're going to need four smaller than number 10 red ring terminals. Those are your standard crimp type connectors for automotive connections etc etc and a way to crimp those onto your cable. You'll need four 440 machine screws with nuts. Quarter inch length is just fine and four number four inside Starlock washers. These are the tools you're going to need for this project. A uh, set of cable cutters or a cutoff wheel for that stainless steel cable. Now you can totally use hookup wire if desired. The problem is the hookup wire takes a set. Like I said, if you watch my video on how to make your portable radio antenna not suck, I talk about that. Uh, these are not inexpensive. Uh, they're a great tool to have. But if you don't want to spend the money, you go to your local bike shop and you get the cable. Tell them, hey, would you mind taking this cable and cutting it into four 19-inch sections? And then at the end of it, if you don't have a soldering station, you can have them crimp on the little cable ends at the end of it there. That's just to keep the cable from unraveling and poking holes in your fingers. You'll need a drill or a hole punch to punch a quarter inch hole and an eighth inch hole. So you'll need four eighth inch holes and one quarter inch hole. A shear to cut the shim stock. EMS scissors work just fine. You'll need some kind of ruler and you'll need some kind of a tool, uh, a scribe or a sharpie to mark how you're going to lay out your cuts on your radial plate. The other tools you're going to need are going to be a one quarter inch nut driver or wrench to tighten up your 440 nuts and then a screwdriver uh, whether it's a Phillips slotted or a uh, hex bit for the 440 machine screws depending on which ones you select for your project. 
Here's our throw down drawing of our radial plate that you're going to make. It's a one by one square of shim stock and you're going to knock a one quarter inch hole in the center and you're going to knock four one eighth inch holes for your radials around the outside and the center of the three of the one eighth inch holes are going to be three sixteenths from either edge. When you're done with your work make sure you round off your corners to keep that from being sharp. our plate. Cut four of these to 19 inches for your elements and then get some red number 10 ring terminals as such. And after you cut them to length, go ahead and make your attachment with your crimper. Just like that. Right now I'm going to go ahead and just uh, solder the ends of this to keep the cables from unraveling. And you can also flood those red connectors with solder if you desire to or use non-insulated connectors. Uh, this is a prototype so I'm not going to go crazy with uh, doing something like that. All we want to do is, is flux our ends here. And we want to flood these connections with solder so they don't stick our fingers. As you know, bicycle cables are want to do. Get our flux off with a prep pad. And now our radials are completed. Now take your radial plate and put your 440 machine screws through it. And I use some star locks on the back side of it. And go ahead and attach your radials. Now we just need to cinch up our connections here. In this circumstance, I'm going to use a quarter inch nut driver and a 1 16th hex bit for the 440 hardware. And I'm just going to draw it down so it's snug. Straighten it out. Tighten it up the rest of the way. You can snug it up with your nut driver. The Starlux do a great job of holding it up against the shim stock. snug it down. Remember snug is tight. Now we'll go ahead and attach our antenna to our radio plate. Go ahead and take your RF adapter and thread your RF adapter on the base of the antenna. And voila! Our ground plane kit is attached. We've got our ground plane kit connected to our Bree antenna and we've got our RG223 feeder and we're running back to my bird AT400 and you can see we're about 1 6 to 1 at VHF and you can see that resonant point there is around 136, 135 megahertz and with it uh, on UHF here you can still see it still resonates at a lower frequency than what I would desire so you know perhaps some trimming is in order these antennas are difficult to trim as well because underneath this cap here what they've done is, is they've taken the radiator and it basically is attached here with a couple of machine screws and it runs all the way up here and then makes a bend and then goes all the way back is one continuous loop so the real way to tune this thing would be to remove all this heat shrink here remove this and trim it from this end here and shorten the overall length of it and then reheat shrink it if you desired to 
tune it. It's really simple to hoist this up. Just take a hank of cordage, which is just a dummy cord, and make yourself a small loop. This is just an overhand loop. Just slide this around your BNC connector. Like that. Now just drop a couple half hitches down the body of the antenna and the way you do this is is holding it tight up against where that loop is at the very end of the antenna here. Just make yourself a loop like that and make your first half hitch and run it down the body of the antenna. You can see the loop around the BNC back here. Run into my first half hitch here and then my second half hitch and it's a lot easier to show you the detail here. I did a video on this before. This is a great way to hoist antennas. It's one of the ways you're taught in the fire service to hoist tools and for antennas like this, this is an excellent way to do this. Here's our ground plane kit attached to a Nagoya antenna and we've got our jumper running back to our AT400 and you can see that its resonant point is doggone perfect uh, as opposed to the Abri. I mean the Abri is not like totally ridiculously out of resonance but just shows you the uh, difference and this is a Nagoya antenna's performance on UHF so as far as uh, resonance goes the antenna is good to go. Well how does it perform? Well I can tell you right now it works awesome. Uh, I'm not going to this video has gone kind of long, so I'm not going to kerchunk repeaters and do a bunch of testing. It's going to take another 15 or 20 minutes. But I did compare this to an older uh, Ringo AR2, and this thing's performance was equal to the AR2 at the same height. So if you take one of these things and put it up about 20 feet in the air with a, a good feed line, that's the big difference, is the uh, Ringo had better feed line on it that you're going to be very impressed with the performance of this and I think this kind of found the niche for this antenna by adding something like this and utilizing this antenna in this capacity. Here's our antenna package for transport and we could certainly re work on reducing the form factor of the antenna at this end because that is rather bulbous down there but overall the weight of this package is five ounces and that's minus the feed line of course and the performance of the antenna is very good when configured like this and it's finally found a practical niche in my opinion and anyone that has one of these antennas I would encourage them to build one of these kits and do their own testing with it uh, like I said the performance is really good no it's not going to be able to carry the kind of power that you can push through a, like an AR2 or an equivalent antenna of that size but you know you could certainly push 10 watts of this antenna without any ill effect. The coil and your components inside of here are not sized sufficiently to handle a lot of power. Your radiator certainly is. So, Anyway, I think this is a practical solution for this antenna and I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comps. Till next time.